Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Okay, let's go. I don't have the Limp Bizkit ready. I'm sorry. I didn't have that ready to play here. Do we need that? What are you do you doing? Do you want me to vamp? Do you want Kinsey and I to vamp while you find it? What does that mean? To, like, spin plates, talk a little, have oh. a, co- you know, do a, just stall. We're stalling. Oh, okay. Yeah. I've go- never heard that term. I never, vamp? I never heard that either. Vamp. I never heard that. That's such a, that's a term. I'm going to be looking up and make sure. Yeah, V-A-M-P. V-A-M-P definition. You're Give realize, me origin, too. You realize by Googling, you're vamping. Uh-huh. Vamp. In jazz and popular music, a short, simple introductory passage usually repeated several times. So that's kind of what we're doing here. This is our introductory passage. It's also the upper front of a boot. (laughs) You know what? So I don't know. I don't know if you're right, but. Thank you for vamping. You're welcome. Worked out perfectly. (laughs) Check it out. Check it out here. See? Okay. Good vamp. It's just one of those days where you don't want to wake up. Everything is. Everybody sucks. You don't really know why. You want to justify ripping someone's head off? No human contact. And if you interact, your life is on contract. Your best bet is to stay away, mother. It's just one of those days. It's all about the he says, she says, bulls. <laughs> I think you better quit. Let it slip, or you'll be leaving with a fat lip. Okay. Now let's go. Three, oh, okay, there we go. Three, Anything one. else you need to tell you more? <laughs> let me know. Does it have I any? I got like eight things I want to Google, so you just let me know. <laughs> got a lot of stuff in your queue ready to go? Oh, yeah. yeah. I, get, I could solve this problem. Anything else you need? <laughs> You okay. got a snack, Brian? You got a snack? I, I'm good. I got my snack. Okay. Do, you I got have everything? Your, do you have your super feminine cup? Uh, it is feminine, right? It's very feminine. So my tea mug, I used to have, first off, a White Castle mug. And then I had a Chicago flag mug, and I just go through them. And this one says, motivation in a mug. And it's written in really, very pretty cursive yeah. and shiny <laughs> letters. It's not even like motivation in a mug with, like, a guy's fist going into the hand. Yeah, like, yeah. that's not what it looks like. <laughs> There's not a pickup truck on it. No, it's like a unicorn's jumping over the word motivation. <laughs> No Motley Crue like pentagram no. on it. <laughs> no. I stole it off someone's desk because I didn't have a, a mug for my green tea that I drink in the morning. Yeah. Do you feel motivated when you drink out of it? I actually do. Yeah. I feel good. Feels good. I, I feel ready to go. Let's rock. Let's rock. <laughs> yeah. My unicorn mug. Let's rock. Let's go. <laughs> ah. Uh, well, check in with us. Give us that proof of life check in. I had something. Listen, I know we have the fact coming up on the highway to the weekend, but something happened to me yesterday that completely blew my mind, and it was this. Those are a snake. No, that's cicadas at my brother's house, Kenzie. Because oh. you don't have them in Elgin, right? You say you don't have them. No, I've no. been cicadaless. I, it's no, this is unbelievable. I saw what everybody's talking about finally leaving leaving the confines of the city and getting to the northern burbs. What mm. suburb does your brother live in? Glenview. Okay. Millions, Kenzie. I mean, millions. I got out of the car, they yeah. landed all over my face just yeah. going to his house for a visit. They landed on your face? Yeah, I got, I'll post a picture. Those horny bastards. I probably have that um, cicada STD on my nose. I, they're just like, I'm a, they found a seat on your mouth. It's disgusting. <laughs> does my nose look like something to want to mate with? No. <laughs> I didn't mean to answer too fast. It hurt your feelings. Sounds like, you had, sounds like you had that one in the chamber. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let me think about it more. Like go longer. You have a Steve Carell nose. What's that mean? I don't want to mate with it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I thought he was a handsome guy. I a, he's good. I watched 40 Old Virgin over the weekends. So it's fresh oh, in my mind, the size of his nose. So good. Yeah. It's so good still. So, yeah, the, I mean, up in Glenview... The cicadas, you can't even walk in the house. You're covered in them. And I don't, that's Northern Burb, so I guess people just go farther up. I finally get it because I, we're, us in the city are kind of going, oh, the cicada thing was overblown. We probably shouldn't have talked about it so much. And now, no, I get it. There are dead ones everywhere, littered all over. 
the sidewalk in your driveway. Ew. You step on them, they crunch Ew. when you get out of the okay, car. It's bothering me. Stop uh, well, it's, I, I, I was just stunned and I could not believe the volume. Well, people are bringing in their pets to the vets. Like the vets have like skyrocketed because their animals are eating too many of them. Like if you let them out in the, it's one thing if you're taking them on a walk, you can like be like, stop it. But when you let them out in the backyard or something, yeah. their animals are just like, they're feasting, like it's Thanksgiving, and people have to take their animals into the vets. My brother has a, a golden doodle named Jetta. So cute. She's a great dog. And I walk out, she comes to see me, and she stops to eat one on the way to greet me. Oh, and then licks your face. Oh, yeah, all over. <laughs> <laughs> <That's disgusting. laughs> Got a little cicada, cicada juice. Wait a minute, this dog seems cool. <laughs> oh, the dog is cool as hell. But just like literally running the seam because usually it just goes crazy, jumping on your leg and everything, and yeah. just like all this beautiful seam. And just stopped, went, Ow. Oh, snap. Mm, mm, mm. The long walk that 40 feet from the door to the dry your car. <laughs> a little snakey snake. Oh, need, a little, need a little protein there. Amen. And I'm like, I guess, like you said, they we've talked about this before. They can eat them, but you can't eat too many of them. Yeah. They don't know how many a, an animal or your dog should eat, so probably just tell your dog not to for the most part. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm just trying to think of, you know, the reverse for you. Because you're like, I can't believe he needed to stop to eat something. But imagine if you were walking up to hug Megan and there was a donut in the middle of you guys. Oh, my God. You would eat it and then go hug Megan. Of course. Uh, yeah. So, same. And you shouldn't eat too many of those either. So, <laughs> I would say dogs and cicadas are you to donuts. That's a really good analogy. That's that what would happen. Scholarly. Yes. Like, if there's a dozen sitting there, I can't sit there and eat a dozen before I hug Megan. But you would. <laughs> but I would. Like a dog. <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Brian and Kenzie on Q101. Again, that Shine Down Lounge is up on Q101's YouTube channel, Q101.com, our socials from last week. It was incredible. Go check it out, share it. Uh, it was an amazing conversation on mental health, but also an amazing performance. So go check it out. Now, time for a fact that makes your brain go. And I'm, I swear this fact doesn't have anything to do with me being a Gen Xer. And Kenzie kind of being a slash Gen Zer millennial. I can't remember, Case, what am I? You're on the cusp. You're technically a millennial, but you don't do, like, boomerang Instagram stories, so I think you're a little bit more Gen Z. Okay, thanks. Age, I don't know. Age <laughs> range why you're, you're, wise, you're 29, and Gen Zers are 12 to 27 right now. Okay. So Case is a Gen Zer. So I'm barely a millennial. Barely. Yeah. Just, just made it in the still nick in, of time. Still in the, <laughs> still in the category. Still okay. a millennial. Okay. You can associate with that. Even if you're not doing boomerangs. The only thing that I did that was millennial is <laughs> I walked in like a week ago and I go, Case, I need I need your youth for a second. And he's <laughs> and even though I'm 29, and he goes, Why? And I go, Can you figure out what kind of iPhone I have? Because I need to order a new case. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, it probably says it somewhere, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> oh, I need my spectacles to see <laughs> the like, numbers. Where does- I don't know. You looked at it was within the phone, it mm. says, huh? Yep. Right? Okay. I found it, right? Yes. Yeah. I go, here you go. That's why I'm here. <laughs> Kenzie turned on her flashlight <laughs> on the phone. Like, it's like looking at a menu. Well, <laughs> in fairness, it should just be written on the back and it's not. I'm like, well, I got I don't know where else to look. I used to like tags. So I imagine on the back of the phone it would say what it is and what size. You could write it on the back if you want. Is it a Sharpie? <laughs> I have an iPhone 11. Do you have a Sharpie? Case, give me a Sharpie. <laughs> I, I have one. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so this fact does relate to Gen Zers and something you're doing that I guarantee you will not guess this. And at 630, we'll give you the fact. So 26% of Gen Zers, people that are age 12 to 27, and I'm probably speaking more to the people in the later end of that, of that range, bring this to a job interview. So... There are a lot of people out of college right now. My nephews are Gen Zers, uh, just graduated from Illinois. John did, and he's looking for a job right now. So I don't know if he's going to do this or not, but 26% bring this to a job interview, and we'll tell you what this is at 630. Can I guess? Sure. I may be right. I feel good about this. I'm not going to say yet, right, you're right or wrong. I feel like it's their availability, because I feel like Gen Z is like, just so you know, this is all I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be honest up front about the whole thing. So I need to be off Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Thursday, and Friday, but I'll come in. I'll work really hard on Wednesday. Yeah, no, I'm looking for a, kind of a, some uh, flexibility on that Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> the Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q101. Time for a fact that makes your brain just go. Now, we clarified that Gen Zers are age 12 to 27. Uh, Kenzie is a millennial, just a couple years older than that. Ken- Case is a Gen Zer. I'm, yeah. a, I'm a Gen X. Coming in hot at 29, me yeah. personally. Yeah, how about it? 
So this fact says, and a lot of people like my nephew, who's 22, just graduated from U of I, whoop, whoop, looking for a job. Anybody want to uh, hire him? Uh, hit me up. Anybody want to beat it? Yeah, he's he's, he's a great, like. great kid, hard worker. What are his skills? What does he do well? Uh, so he was a history major at U of I. He might, mm. he might get into some legal stuff, like maybe being a paralegal or go to law school or whatever, but he's so right now. why did he major in history? Because a lot of times people do that for the research angle of being a lawyer. That it trains you how to do research in history. He loves history, though, too. Seems like an extra step. Well, because you don't really necessarily. That's, be, that's not how I operate. If you're going to go to law, law if you're going to be like a lawyer, people don't necessarily always go pre-law in college. They do different kinds of degrees like that. It might be political science. Really? But yeah, yeah. Because I was, I was going to be, as a communication major, I thought of going to law school. If this didn't all work out, it still might not. Might be a little, <laughs> might, might be a little yeah, late. Might turn out to be a lawyer. Might be a little late to go to law school. I, I can see you being a lawyer. You because can't see me? No. And I'm gonna, this is a compliment. Okay. I think you're too nice. Well, listen, you haven't seen me be a pit bull when it comes to uh, cleaning up the pit, kitchen. A uh, big old pit bull. <laughs> Fuzzy guy? That's right. I don't think so. Hey, Judge, come on, man. Let him off. Uh, huh? was, we've all been there. Listen. He's like, no, we haven't. He stole. <laughs> I know they caught the hatchet in his head. <laughs> but listen, my guy, we all get a little bit uh, upset when parking's I tough, right? you would be, like, making, like, you know, 40-year-old virgin references, and they'd be, like, not appreciating it. They'd love me. They'd laugh. And yeah. then maybe they'd give me the cut. Maybe well, that's every lawyer's goal is to make everyone laugh. Yeah. yeah. But, I'd have, the, the, the main I'd have the jury in the palm of my hand. Oh, I believe yeah. it. So anyway, uh, Gen Zers are doing interviews. And what they're bringing to an interview, 26%, blew my mind. And no one guessed it right. Kenzie said, what'd you say? Um, oh, a list of demands, kind no, of. No, no, no. Their they're availability. Their availability. <laughs> I could just see them being like, listen. Yeah. I, I got to be inside for four years. <laughs> so I'm not really into this whole Monday through Friday just. And yeah. I get it. Case, what do you think it is? I think it's pepper spray. I think they're so <laughs> untrustworthy that they're bringing pepper spray to job interviews. You know what? I think of pepper spray and I just get angry because Riot Fest took my pepper spray away last year. Oh, my year. God. Sorry. And I'm just really angry about it. Well, you should carry pepper spray, ladies, out there. You should definitely carry it. You know it. what's annoying, though, is that when you get to the place that you probably need it, it always gets <laughs> taken away. <laughs> it's like, okay. So it's not pepper spray. That's okay. bummer. It's not your availability, which sounds amazing. It is their parents. No. Aw. So, <laughs> <laughs> You're lying. Yeah, huh? <laughs> 26% of Gen Zers have brought their parents to a job interview. Now, it doesn't say they went in the job interview, but Wait, some of them... Did they just need a ride? Well, no, some of them had their parents come in to that, the office. That sucks. Um, That's not good. So they said they, uh, they involved their parents in the interview process. 31% of those respondents had a parent accompany them. So actually, it's more to the in-person interview. And 29% had them join a virtual interview, meaning they were actually on the screen during a virtual that just interview. That insane. Why can't they just sit to the side of you and nobody sees them? Why would you, like, can you send this to my mom's email also? <laughs> like, you don't even have to admit it. I, I'm just, listen, That's insane. I, I'm not trying to dump on the Gen Zers. I'm just saying I can't imagine trying to hire somebody and then here's my ma. You know, here's my ma. She's going to make sure everything goes okay here. Oh, don't gosh. talk to my son like that. What do you see yourself in five years? He's not going to answer that. <laughs> Is she your lawyer also? <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't think they'd be mad about that question. I don't know. Where do you see something in five years? Probably still with her, if I had to imagine. Can I defend Gen Z here? Yeah, go ahead. You, you got the floor as a Gen Zer. Once again, a, a, an unnecessary criticism from a generation that has been nothing but unfairly criticized. What they are doing. <laughs> Hold on. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> what they are doing is saying, hey, if my parents turned out okay, upstanding citizen, raised a fine young person like myself, then shouldn't you hire me, take a chance on me? Because I'm going to turn into that person that happened to join me on this job interview. What are you, Abba? <laughs> take a take chance, a chance on, on me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, was slow on the Abba reference there. Uh, yeah, Gen, Zers don't, the, Gen Zers don't know who Abba is. They don't know is. anything. No, they don't know who Abba is. Your mom would. That's why she's come to the interview. That's don't right. talk about my mother like that. <laughs> See, I want, now I want Mrs. Case here. Good Lord. Mrs. Do, Case. Do you not know my last name? It's low. Okay. Oh. Like huh. our expectations. If you know your mom here. 71% said their parent was off camera in these Zoom interviews, but 29% they were visible on it. Um, they said it's understandable. Parents wanting to ensure their child does well in an interview or that the employer is reputable. Mm. 
Oh, listen, I've had all my interviews in a race. employees rep are like, I don't know about this NBC thing. <laughs> uh, we'll find out when I get there. Well, I was going to say every, every interview I had was in radio, so none of them were reputable. That's true. So, I mean, I think that was pretty much a guarantee. <laughs> Um, I've had a bu- I could write a book on the interviews I've had, the weirdest interviews, being ghosted after them, being the weird demands in them. But I, I don't understand. Hey, men, imagine if you were a girl. <laughs> you think you've had weird demands in an interview. Gee, what were you asked to do, Kenzie, yeah, in an interview? I don't know if I talk about it. So there's this couch I... over here. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, so what we do is we get girls like you a job. They pay five hundred to a thousand dollars a day. <laughs> Listen. I thought I was here to do an I announcing have a job though. today, and that's what matters. <laughs> This all brings back memories a little bit of Step Brothers with not, not the parents, but of course uh, they interview as a team. Mr. Huff, Mr. Jeaner is ready for your interview. Actually, we'll be interviewing as a team. We're here to f up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, who is this gentleman sitting behind you? Hello, Ms. Lady. <laughs> I'm Gail. I'm Brennan's Step Brother, and I think I might be able to help with a Pan Pam. Dilemma. Yeah, that'd be great. Pam. 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 Oh, no. Pam. Pam. With an There's M. There's a D on the end. There's no D. It's Pam. It's like calm. <laughs> That's P A N M. M. Two M. Two M. M. That was the No, there's just one M. The Brian and Kenzie Show. On Q. 101. It's Brian and Kenzie on Q101, portion of the show every Monday. Want to hear from you with a highlight of your weekend. So call in 312-591-8300. We'd love to hear your voices of either your excitement or disappointment or whatever happened. You can kind of tell us better with your voice what really happened this weekend that was awesome and amazing. Uh, Kenzie, do you want to start? Highlight of your weekend? Um, I think the highlight of my weekend was it was a very long weekend. We went to Iowa for baseball. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, the highlight was when we got to the hotel, you'd never believe what was in the same parking lot. Uh, I Wow. I can't even the think of what to guess. The same parking lot of our hotel. Can I take a guess? Yes. Wienermobile. No. Oh. Better. Damn it. Good Whoa, guess. Better and and tread lightly. Um, Texas Roadhouse. Oh, yeah. You mean like a food truck? No. <laughs> like, we, we shared a parking lot. Oh, the restaurant <laughs> was connected to yes. a Texas Roadhouse, the hotel. Yes. I was so... Oh, I was like, well, thank you, baby Jesus, because <laughs> it was just like, you know, I wasn't overly enthused to spend the entire weekend in Iowa with a, with a new board, and I was like, this is going to be a lot. This is going to be aggressive. It was a baseball tournament for Tristan, right? Yes. Yeah, and travel like, baseball. This is, and I have to say, on the way down there, boy, did we pass a lot of baseball fields, and I was like, we can play there, we can play there, we can play there, we can play there. <laughs> You're still um, driving. <laughs> we can play there, we can play there. Why does GPS there? say we have 180 miles left when there's a fine baseball field like, right there? One. Look at that one. That one's nice, huh? <laughs> uh, but anyways, we get there, we check in. They charged us money to watch him play, which was interesting. Well, you, well, well, well don't you, didn't you already pay or something? Yes, or? we spent a lot of money to put him in the tournament. And then when you get there, they were like, well, individually, you each have to pay. I'd argue to not pay money for the baby. It was 25 a person. So it was a ticket? Yes, to watch him. Huh. I'm like, I don't know, what if I just stand here? Because they were like right before the field. I'm like, I can see him great from like right before the desk. Anyways, I picture I picture some guy looks like got a good fellows in an Adidas track suit. Uh-huh, yeah. He just kind of rolled up there with like, hey, yo, you want to see your kid play uh, baseball? You got to, it's about uh, 50 bucks for the family right here. You I want honestly, seats in the front right? Get your front row. I almost flipped the table. I mean, it was like a 15 year old in charge of this thing and I, they should have been terrified. I'd argue to not spend $25 on the baby. They also wanted us to spend 25 I go, he's not looking. Like, I'm not doing this. And so I, I, it was it was exhausting. He did great. That was awesome. But to for there to be a Texas Roadhouse, I'm like, this is this is my peace offering from Iowa. That was the that was the karma situation. It was my beacon of hope. So how many times in the weekend you were there two nights that you eat at the Texas Roadhouse? Twice. Twice in two nights. <laughs> so of course you did. I'm like, he's like, the team's eating here. I go, well, we're eating here. I don't care where the team is. We're going to Texas Roadhouse, baby. Do you get a different order at Texas Roadhouse two nights in a row? Well, I I just switch up the the cut of steak, so I'll get like prime rib or ribeye. I just switch that up. Can I ask, since I haven't been the one in a while, mm-hmm. ask the, away because w- I'm a professional. Was the meal so? It was you, your husband, and Tristan and the baby? Yes. And the baby obviously isn't eating in the Texas Roadhouse. It was not. He is out. having milk. So was the three of you under a hundred dollars for the meal, maybe or now still? 
Do you have any drinks? Because we didn't have alcohol. So, yeah, we stayed under. Under 100 bucks. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad. Because every time you go out now, it seems like it's 100 bucks. I don't, I, I don't care if it's Culver's. I mean, it just doesn't matter. You go out, it's like 100 bucks with a group I'm of sure people. I'm sure if we would have both gotten drinks, because then you add, you would have eased, because the tip would have went up too. Sure. Then it probably would have been, but with us not getting that. Yeah. And we still sneak in a kid's menu for, for Trista. We're on the cusp. He's 10. He's almost out of kids' menu territory, but... Does he get a steak on the kids' menu? Yes. Oh, my God. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like you're fine. You're going to get that steak. Whoa. I thought it'd be chicken nuggies or... Well, that's what I, some kids' menus... He's at the age where some kids' menus are, like, they're too kid for him, but then some are still really good. Like, there's two steak options. I'm like, you'll be fine. Okay. Because the only difference was, like, it wasn't 16 ounces. It was, like, 10, which is okay. And then... One side instead of two, which he never wants to eat his sides because he's a kid. So I might give me fine. Isn't it infuriating when kids waste their sides? Oh, it was hilarious because, <laughs> I, and I'm like, why did you do this to me? He fought hard. He wanted the seasoned rice. He's like, let me get the seasoned rice. Let me get. And, and my husband's like, no, you're not gonna eat it. And he's wait, like, wait, what ten year old wants rice? <laughs> seasoned rice. rice. <laughs> I'm sorry, our family's Latin. I make rice all the time. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So he was like ready to rock. He must have been imagining like like paella or something which is not what this was and i'm like he eats rice all the time he'll be fine let him get it and he made me look so bad because he took one bite and he didn't want it and then my husband looked at me and is like i knew he wouldn't eat the rice and i'm like well this is a fun family <laughs> oh man i'm like oh well sounds good yeah good. texas roadhouse there i love to john, i couldn't have been more excited john checked in from 224 weekend highlight got new ac installed on saturday oh, congratulations john just in time for sunday when it was 80 something even though today is like 50 something but that's still. awesome oh new ac that's good living okay so i want to hear about your weekend i'm up against it for a second so i want to hear your weekend highlight i have a weekend highlight where i was hit on by a woman right in front of my wife while pushing the stroller with my baby in it. Big Why, dog. What did she say? Well, I'll tell you when we come back here. She's like, I want to ride your face like that cicada. She did not say that. Oh, okay. Uh, it's unfortunate because that would have been a great lie. <laughs> <laughs> Brian and Kenzie in the morning and Chicago's alternative all day. Q101.